Hi. So, good evening in my case. Uh, good morning to uh, you if it's morning for you and uh, good afternoon, of course, too, if it's currently afternoon for you. In my case, it's already dark outside. And uh, yeah, it's a somewhat chilly uh, autumn evening in Germany right now. And uh, if I sound like uh, I have a bit of a, a stuffed nose or something like that, that's because I have. So just as a word of warning. Um, um, I guess we can get started right now, uh, unless anyone still has something else to do. Uh, I certainly don't. So let's just get started. Um, as usually, I uh, will first uh, tell you guys what I have been up to the past uh, couple of weeks since our last um, edition of this of this uh, little broadcast here. Um, what my future plans are for the next couple of weeks. And then uh, I also plan on having a Q&A, a question and answer section. The only problem is that so far I haven't got any questions um, uh, from you guys yet to, to answer during this session. So if you have any questions while I'm talking here, uh, and if you can think of anything that you always wanted to know about Octoprint but never had a chance to ask, um, now is your chance because uh, there is a live chat and it should be, I hope, there. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm also online in there and I'm constantly monitoring it. It's on, on this side. So when you see me glancing to there, then you know I'm, I'm looking at the chat. And if you have any questions, then you can just dump them in there. And uh, I hope to catch them and then answer them during our little Q&A session. Um, well, and after the Q&A session, we'll have a, a somewhat early wrap up this time. Usually when I still have uh, some time left, then uh, until the, the, the planned hour that I, I uh, prepared for, then uh, if I have still some, some time left at, at the end of our little talk here, I usually uh, get up, up on my soap, soapbox a bit and rant about the one or other thing or explain you something in, more, in a bit of more, more detail. The only problem is that I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. So I hope you don't mind that I uh, stay off my soapbox for today. <laughs> so after the Q&A, we'll uh, get to a short wrap up and uh, that's it. So let's get started, I guess. Um, what I have been up to. So I don't know if you saw the last couple of broadcasts, but the recurring theme in those was the um, the preparations for the 1.3.0 release that is currently on the development branch. And uh, I made some huge steps for it in that the past couple of weeks. Uh, the last time that I reported on this, I um, told you that there were still some things that I needed to document and that not that writing the documentation was not only a case of, of basically writing the documentation, but that this process also allowed me to revisit uh, what I had written uh, with regards to code and functionality and uh, reevaluate re if I was really happy with how I had done that and uh, fix stuff before it hit mainstream that way. And this is also what I did a lot. So I completed the whole documentation for the new JavaScript client uh, library, which is now bundled with Octoprint and with, which will also allow um, custom UI um, plugins to utilize the existing uh, uh, code to communicate with the REST API without having to dig into all this on its own. And while uh, documenting all that, I also streamlined it, uh, ironed out several kings, realized where the API docs for the REST API were still missing, which I wanted to refer to from the um, from the from the JS client docs and fix those docs. Then found further issues with the REST API implementations and fix those here and there as well. Uh, that stuff, of course, happened in a backwards compatible way, so that anyone depending on the API would not run into trouble. So that is one part of what I did. I also still while um, while while documenting that and then test driving what I had fixed and all that, I also still found a, uh, an, another couple of, of of issues here and there that aren't out on that branch. So I'm now getting way more confident that we can launch soon. And in fact, um, I really really hope that uh, over the na over the next week, so uh, starting uh, Monday the uh, 10th. Uh, until the 15th or something, somewhere in that time frame that I'll be able to push out the first release candidate of 1.3.0 on the Devil RC uh, release channel, which you should have access to 
if you're running uh, Octoprint 1, 2, 16 or, um, or later. Um, later uh, means currently only 1, 2, 17 RC1. Uh, which I released, uh, yeah, pre-released on uh, on October 6th, so two days ago. And um, I also hope, uh, depending of course a bit on the feedback that I get back for that uh, for that release candidate, to push this out as a proper stable release over the course of next week. Um, so if you feel, uh, um, yeah curious as to what has uh, been changed in 1217 just want to help a bit with testing stuff and all that um just switch to the maintenance uh, rc channel and then you can also give that a test drive the only problem is that you have to decide if uh, if you want to drive devil rcs or maintenance rcs you cannot intermingle those but currently there are only are only maintenance rcs so for for now you should be good with that and once i push out devil um the maintenance rcs should ebb down a bit anyhow, because then I will fully concentrate on 1.3, um, on, on getting 1.3 ready for full prime time. Uh, one part of getting uh, 1.3.0 or rather the Devil Branch prepared for uh, a first release candidate was also a little history trip, because I had to go through all of the git commits of the past months, years. No, not years, not plural, but still, since I released 1.2.0, there uh, were a lot of things that had happened on the devil branch. And in order to be able to compile a change log for all of that, so that you at a glance can see what was changed and what wasn't and what new features were introduced and what's bu what bugs were fixed and all that, I had to go through all of those commits. And I probably overlooked some stuff here and there, but I th think the majority should uh, now be in the change log for the first RC. And uh, yeah, that that costs also a, a surprising amount of time. Anyhow, so very very uh, too long, uh, very very short, too long. Didn't read. Um, lots of work on on uh, on one three zero. Couple of bug fixes and improvements that then uh, became one two seventeen RC one. And uh, I hope that both RCs uh, for for one three zero and uh, also uh, the the final release of one two seventeen will hit you guys one way or the uh, other over the over the next couple of days of course as usual that depends a bit on the feedback and also how how that nose develops um uh, so um what do i plan to do after all that so i already said currently i'm fully focused on the first release candidate of 1.3.0 once that's out of the door um I do expect some increase in bug reports in the GitHub tracker, and um, because because right now I'm I'm fairly sure that there are still bugs in 1.3.0 as it is right now. The problem is I can't see the forest for all the damn trees in the way anymore. So um, I guess it just needs some more people looking on it in order to locate them. And then some time for me to iron them, iron them out for good. Um, so once I have some feedback on the current, uh, on on the then release candidate for for 1.3.0, my focus will be on uh, ironing out any kinks that you guys discover, or also what I might uh, still discover in the meantime, and then either get the full release uh, out or prepped and then out or, or a second release candidate, depending of course uh, on, on how things develop. So that would be the, the short term plan. Uh, the long, the, the slightly longer term plan is, uh, so one, once 1 1.3 point out is, is well out. I really think I need to take some days off of coding for once because um, currently the whole issue tracker is a bit in a, in a messy state as of now, and then especially uh, the the feature requests re need some love. So this is something that I would need to take a long and sharp look at. Look at, and because the issue is that there are now a couple of feature request uh, tickets in the back tracker that were already implemented or that were duplicates anyhow of others and. Because I was concentrating on, on actual software development for so long, that stuff really accumulated. So um, the next big task 
for me would after 1.3.0 for me would actually be to try to get some order into that chaos and also um, get the feature requests in an in a state where I could actually get some feedback from you people on the prioritization of the features in order in which order to tackle them basically to get a feeling of what um, of the stuff that is currently on the really long feature request list is actually something that you want to see very 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 soon or stuff that has a rather low priority and uh, there are also a lot of things on there that are probably now suited to actually be implemented through plugins so this is also something where i would need to go through a bit with a weed whacker and figure out what is actually something that should go into octoprint core and what is stuff that should rather be implemented as a plugin maybe by opening up further plugin interfaces on octoprint which is of course also always something that i'm looking into um and uh yeah so basically clean up stuff on the issue tracker and uh, get some prioritization going for the feature request. I will probably have to find somewhere um, something like a, a third party system or anything like that uh, in order to, to allow voting on the features. The thing is that um, the current approach, I hope I'm still there because my PC just shut off all monitors. Um, <laughs> because the current approach that I'm using with GitHub is that GitHub, while they now have this thumbs up and thumbs down stuff, they are still not that suited to actually uh, giving you back a ranking of, of tickets in order of, of, of what people like and what they don't like. So um, I might have to look into stuff. Thanks for the feedback that my picture apparently is still there. Um, so another thing that I promised on, on, on Patreon actually to look into is that um, recently I had a little uh, yay or nay question uh, with regards to uh, doing some more coding centric videos. So basically things like uh, development tutorials, both um, about Octoprint proper itself, basically explaining what the various components are, where they are located, what works together with what and where the interfaces lie and all that. And also um, doing something like a coding tutorial uh, where we build a small plugin together or something like that. And uh, this is something I want to do after the feedback I so far got on that, which was like, yes, please. And uh, I have to figure out how. So this is something I would also take a look at after 1.3.0 is released. Um, yeah. But that is basically the the future plans after 1.3.0. Of course, in the long run, what I also still really want to do is getting that um, that communication layer cleaned up. I don't know if I mentioned that in the first or second broadcast that we did. Um, that thing has me bothering for a while now. It's one of the oldest components in Octoprint. It's actually still largely... Uh, a, 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 an heirloom from from Cura back when Octoprint was kind of a Cura fork which yes it was history lesson here and um, I uh, added some some stuff here and there over the years and it's become a bit unwieldy and um, at, at this point, it is, it had to be, it, it, ugh, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling over my words today a bit. At this point, it has become so unwieldy that I'm actually scared uh, to to have to do any changes in that in that communication layer. So over the past two years, actually, now I've on and off been working on uh, a replacement for that. Uh, I, I nearly had reached a point where I was happy with I had done about yeah, about two years ago around Christmas time. And then I had to scrap all that because I discovered something about uh, certain firmware versions that made my whole approach completely go boom. And uh, I then retraced my steps about a year ago and did another version of that with the, with the new learnings basically worked into. And I would like to revisit that and get this off the ground because that would also allow us um, to do something like like plugins that target specific printers which are not G-code based, 
for which right now you have to do some quite hackish stuff which works but i mean it would be nicer if there was something like like a, like a protocol module which is what you talk to the printer and a transport module which is how you connect to the printer and then you could recombine those however you need so if you basically had a printer that talks g code over a serial connection that would be one combination but you could also have a printer that talks g code over i don't know a tcp connection so a network basically or you could have could have a printer that talked some json dialect or whatnot over serial connection and all that so this is basically where i want to go with octoprint with regards to more modularity in the communication layer and also clean up lots of that craft that accumulated in that layer over the past couple of years um because that was i I can't describe how scared I am of this communication layer by now. Um, anyhow, um, the question also, of course, is why has it grown that much and why has it become so unwieldy? And this is one one topic where I would have to get on a soapbox now and talk uh, at length about the um, about the quite sad situation that we have in the in the in the consumer 3d printing market with regards to printing protocols and printer communication stacks but i said no rents today so i'll i'll try to refrain on that but i promise you someday you will hear the whole story and uh, uh, one of the reasons for all those gray hairs anyhow so um now that's only been me 17 uh, me, me talking for about 70 minutes or something like that and uh, i'm already through all my what have i been up to in future plan sections so um i see that i have one question in the live chat which is do you think the question is a bit jumbled let's try if i can parse that sorry um Yeah, I, I don't understand the first part of the question. Uh, do you think would have had anything to do with my M3D's disconnection, reconnection every 20 or 30 seconds, or should I be glaring at M3D? I guess that was still referring to the communication. Ah, the connection layer, uh, communication layer issues. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, the problem is uh, with uh, with the M3D that that plugin, which is uh, currently, I think, the only way in order to get Octoprint working with the M3D. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what this thing is all doing. I know that it is, uh, as far as, at least last time I looked at it, I think it was doing basically the same thing as the GPX plugin, which you, you, which you need for FlashForge or other MakerBot clones in order to um, make them work with Octoprint, which is basically going between the, the serial uh, port and the communication layer with an Octoprint. So basically, adjusting what was being sent over the serial port by by basically wrapping it and uh, playing serial port and um, i'm not quite sure what kinds of adjustments it does i might also be completely mistaken and it is not actually providing a wrapped uh, serial layer uh, so sorry a wrapped serial port um but just from the feeling of my guts, if, you, if you're seeing constant disconnection and reconnections every 20 or 30 seconds or so, I, I might try to address this on the M3D, uh, sorry, on the M33 file, <laughs> a plugin, uh, plugins issue tracker, or, or otherwise getting in touch with the developer there, because I think this is not something that everyone is seeing, um, because otherwise I would probably heard of it by now, I don't know so, though. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's an issue with your specific printer, maybe it's a plugin issue, maybe it's some weird interaction between Octoprint and the plugin, but uh, this is something that um, just from from the top of my head, I I don't know how to best solve other than first trying to, to seek help with uh, the guy who actually wrote the plugin. That being said, I'm I'm still getting a bit of a of, of of mixed feedback with regards to the M3D printer, so I, I don't know. Some people say it's great, and some people say it's horrible, and I'm undecided what to think of it. Anyhow, okay. So so far that was the only question. Please ask questions. Um, if you don't ask questions, I will be forced to I don't know sit here at quietly and 
look into the camera a bit lost and, and sad and lonely. Um, I'm currently thinking if I still had something else that I wanted to tell you maybe about any future plans or if I forgot something that I had been up to, but I don't think so actually. Ah, I don't know if um, I mentioned yet what features we will actually have with 130, which might be of, of uh, some huge interest. So one of the things that has been asked a lot for is uh, folder support. So you can finally actually not only have this 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 flat uh, one level only file list anymore, but you can create folders and have your files um, separated into folders and subfolders and subfolders and not uh, and so on. And that way, that will hopefully allow you to organize your your um, your various projects and and files belonging to them in a in a bit more structured way. I realize that stuff as it is right now can get uh, a bit. Uh, yeah, chaotic very easily. To be honest, back when I implemented the file list as it is today, which was nearly four years ago, I had not planned on on people, including myself, to keep the files in there. So at first I had basically just structured it as something like you upload three or four files and then you print them and then you delete them again and be done with it. And now I find myself having hundreds of, of files in there. So yeah, folders, definitely we need folders. Um, what 130 will not directly have itself is a, is a more powerful file manager for now at least. Um, but there is a nice little plugin that uh, Mark Hanapel, aka Salandora coded up, uh, which currently only works with Devil, so which needs 130. But that will also give you a full-fledged file monitor in a in a separate tab where you will be able to batch delete stuff and move stuff around, upload files to the SD card of the printer, which is slow, but still, if you don't want to want to, to plug that out of the printer and push it into a card reader and then back into the printer and all that, this is an option that you have uh, then when you install that plugin. So this is exciting news, I guess. And um, also in 130 we will have a fancy new wizard system so I, I don't know if you remember when you first set up your octoprint machine but then it, it pushed popped up that little um, thingy where you needed to to enter your your user credentials uh, set up basically your first admin account or disable access control if you did not um, decide to connect octoprint to the internet in any way and only had it running in your own local um, in your own local network anyhow and uh, this has been hugely expanded upon. So if uh, you start Octoprint now for the first time, it will also, sorry, it will also ask you for stuff like if it's not already um, shipped pre-configured stuff like the webcam URL, of course, also the access control stuff, printer profile, um, Cura profile, what not, what did I put in there as well? Server command configuration, all that. So, and this stuff is also expandable by, by plugin. So if in the future you install a plugin and that plugin needs some information from you in order to be able to work properly. So for example, the push puller plugin, which needs an API token in order to be able to push your um, messages to the push bullet API. Um, that then, if the plugin author uh, remembers to do that, they can also add wizard uh, dialogues then. So if you fire up Octoprint, install the plugin, and then restart Octoprint, it will realize that there is a new plugin there that wants some information in order for it to, to be able to work. And if you're logged in as an administrator, then it will show you the wizard um, and ask you for that information so that you can configure the stuff and hopefully um, be uh aware that stuff needs information from you because right now this is something that still needs to be described in the plugins documentation and if people don't use uh, don't read that or just don't know where to find it then it can be a bit frustrating and finally also a very big feature is the ui plugins the new ui plugins which basically allow you to fully replace octoprint's ui based on um, request parameters or even always so you could have something like a dedicated mobile ui which only shows you the webcam feed maybe the progress bar and some nifty buttons for off and on and that's uh, not off and on sorry pause and resume and all uh, cancel and and that's it um or you could have something uh, that 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 um, a different ui on on the display that is attached to your 
Raspberry Pi, for example, than, uh, than when you connect from an external browser or stuff like that. So this is something that I hope will allow people out there to experiment a bit with their setups and hopefully uh, some exciting new stuff will come out of this. I know that there are already people uh, working on full conversions and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to see where this will be going once 1.3 hits the mainstream. So in the meantime, you have you have been some busy bees in the channel, uh, in the channel, in the chat I just saw. So give me a second to read through that. Um, Okay, so um, I am interested in writing a UPC UA layer as a demo for manufacturing machines. Could I do this as a plugin of Octoprint? UPC UA is a protocol for read writing information, get alerts and receive commands. Um, yeah, I mean, in principle, I don't know the details of uh, UPC UA, but I guess it would be something that you either talk over the existing printer communication I don't know, or uh, something differently than that, some 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 other kind of connection that you would have to to um, fire up first. But in principle, yeah, that would be something that would perfectly work perfectly fine. In in theory, you you can build plugins that stay in connection with other services, uh, like for example the Telegram plugin, which um, keeps a connection open to to Telegram, so that you can message your bot from your uh, from your smartphone or from the Telegram client running on there and have it do do stuff or tell it, tell you what is currently going on and sending you webcam images and all that. Um, so basically, as long as you can implement it in Python, you um, yeah, you can do things. Uh, the only thing that you have to be a bit careful about is that you don't have your plugin, which is doing whatever you want it to do, talking to foreign servers or doing um, uh, and or, or doing doing monitoring or something like that, that it doesn't hog down the, the CPU too much. Because the problem with Octoprint plugins is that the, they run in the same process as Octoprint, which they have to because otherwise they couldn't access the memory and uh, all the shared data. So all the all the stuff that they need in order to be able to work. And uh, the thing with Python is that uh, due to its uh, due to the language design, it's not pro possible to to uh, split this into multiple processes. So if you have something that bogs down the CPU, it will bog down the same CPU that is uh, responsible of uh, talking to your printer. And this is something that you do not want. So if you write a plugin, always uh, be sure to make uh, be, be sure to 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 make it not consume too much system resources, at, at least not when you are printing. So this is also something that I constantly have to worry about when designing stuff in the core. So um, you're at least not alone. <laughs> um, so then uh, very new to Octoprint, 3D printing in general. Are there any plugins or thoughts about future support for, cam for camera PTZ? Uh, not sure if the feature is there or not. I have to admit, I have no idea what the acronym PTZ or PTZ is uh, is about. So if you could clarify that a bit, that would be great. Um, the thing with cameras and Octoprint, though, is that Octoprint itself does not really talk to your camera. So um, what it does is it... Uh, it embeds an MJPEG stream provided by some webcam uh, server into the web uh, page, so in, in, into the browser, which is what you see on the control tab. And it also is able to consume a single URL, which should provide a current snapshot from the camera as, an, as a JPEG file. So what Octopint does not is talk to the camera directly. It depends on external software to do that. On Octopi, that is uh, the MJ MJPEG streamer uh, software package. And um, I don't know if that also, thanks for clarifying uh, PTZ's pen tilt zoom. I, I learned something new every day. Um, I, I think the MJPEG streamer uh, package in theory supports that. What would of course be possible if you have some kind of 
API beat on a serial bus beat via USB beat something else like that to to uh, create a plug in which would control uh, the pan the tilt and the zoom of the camera that way as long as there is some interface uh, to to talk to with a documented API of course I might I have to add then this is possible also I'm not sure if MJPEG Streamer supports it via the um, via the basic HTTP uh, um, API that it has Maybe it does. I, I know that it when you start it up, it uh, probes your camera if it supports this stuff. But I don't know if it really um, has some kind of API to access that, which you could control from within Octoprint. In any case, uh, theoretically possible. Currently not on, on track, at least for me. I think, though, that a couple of weeks ago, someone on IRC mentioned working on that. Now, of course, I can't remember at all who was it, what camera it was, and uh, how it was meant to work out. But uh, yeah, I, I I can try to figure this out. It might be a bit, uh, might be a while though. I have to comb through the locks for that. I I guess. Um, in general, though, um, what also has been requested a lot by people is. Uh, stuff like uh, multiple cameras so uh, basically allowing you to have uh, have to have the c capability to switch between camera streams <laughs> sorry <laughs> and um, uh, so that you you have basically the, the the means to to see the thing you are printing from multiple objects uh, from multiple angles so that you can um, yeah, so that you can have a, a better better grasp of what is being printed currently. Because, of course, I mean, depending on how you mounted your camera, it might be great where it is for the first couple of layers, but suck at showing you what's going up once the print goes up a bit further. So for situations like that, being able to have multiple cameras would, of course, be interesting. The tricky part, of course, is how do we go about time lapses with this setup? So from where do we fetch the images and how do we mix all that together then in, into a render later on? And But still, this is also something I still want to look at. I'm talking about time lapses, time lapse, uh, uh, opening up the time lapse support that is currently in Octoprint for plugins is also something that is still burning a hole into my to-do list pocket because this is also something that a lot of people have asked, basically, like, I wanted to trigger a picture when, I don't know, when this line is my G-code that is currently being sent to Octoprint, or when this line is being received from the firmware and all that, and currently this is not possible, it would be nice to have it. Um, so, in the chat we currently have some conversation going on again and I need to take a short break to read this. Sorry, I'm, I I know I'm supposed to be multitasking capable, but apparently I'm not today. Um, yeah, so so David says that uh, onviv, O-N-V-I-V-I-F, I don't know how it's pronounced actually, but uh, you get the idea, I hope, is a protocol that would be sidelined with MJPEG. It supports carrying camera features and issues, issue commands. Maybe a good idea for a plugin I could work on. The question though is, if it's sidelined in MJPEG, that would need also, there's a back channel involved or something like that? Hmm. I would be interested how that works out. Maybe I need to look at, take a look at that. Sounds interesting in any case. Um, then Octoprint seems to support multiple printers and accessing Octoprint on multiple ports, one for each. Is that even remotely recommended? And I uh, and and lo am I looking at that right? Etc. So um, the thing is that it depends a bit on on what machine you're running Octoprint on. To be honest, I would definitely not recommend trying to run multiple pr printers concurrently through multiple Octoprint instances on something like a single core Pi One, because then you would have uh, two print processes competing for the quite limited resources on that machine. Um, it might work better on the multi-core uh, machines like the Pi 2 and the Pi 3, and also, of course, on any other multi-core single PCB computer or uh, or, or something like, uh, yeah, basically the old laptop that you are still got lying around collecting dust, as I said in my Patreon video, which is also something that, of course, uh, you can use for running Octoprint. 
uh, regardless of what uh, operation system you run under. Um, so my personal recommendation is you can run uh, multiple instances concurrently, but I would not recommend to do that uh, because yeah, I, I'm happy that stuff works on a, on a Pi as is. I'm not so sure that it reliably works if you try to run it multiple times on the same Pi. Um, again, I'm talking about Pis here. A full-fledged computer is a whole different matter and I don't see any problem there. Um, if you have uh, something like multiple printers connected to one Raspberry Pi and just swap between them via the connection panel, then there's no problem at all. In the long run, what I would love to have someday is some kind of, yeah, basically allowing multiple printers from one instance. But uh, that doesn't really make sense as long as they haven't found a way to decouple the printing process from the, um, yeah, from the rest of the machine, basically. Because there still is a bottleneck now. And um, as I said, this, this stupid yeah, not stupid. I mean, there are good reasons for it, but this particular design decisions with the Python, Python language that prevent me from uh, doing real proper multiprocessing. Uh, yeah, that that makes my life a bit difficult with regards to yeah making sure that you have a good experience uh, even when you have more than let's say four printers running concurrently. Um, yeah, so I I'm not sure yet. Uh, if I really will ever get around to to this kind of uh, happily switching between multiple connected things. But uh, something that some people have already fired up and working is uh, some, some hub, some centralized hub. So basically you, you get you give each printer their own, uh, their own Octoprint instance, but have some centralized hub that connects to all those instances, collects the information from them and represents those in a nifty manner so that uh, you still can manage multiple printers at one glance without constantly having to swap between browser tabs. Yeah. Um, but in theory, I mean, take uh, completely ignoring the CPU thing for now, uh, I don't see any issue with running multiple instances and uh, each one having their own print job running. So the only bottleneck really at now is the CPU. And of course, at some point also the, the available ports on your machine because um, they are not infinite. So if you have, I don't know, 32,767 instances running, you might run into problems. But I guess your memory will explode before that anyhow. Um, okay, so another look into the chat. And so far, I don't see any more questions. No, so far, no more questions. So I give you some more seconds or uh, maybe a minute or so to come up with something else that I should ask and uh, answer now, ask and answer. Well. Um, but if right now you're happy and question free, then I would wrap this up, I think, and uh, get some more tea into myself. Uh, while I'm waiting for more questions to come in, um, if there come more questions in, um, let me uh, lose some words about the next plant hang hangout. So the this one was uh, the, the the appointment for this one was voted on by the Patreons. Um, the last one before that, I decided uh, myself on the appointment at at my time evening, and um, as usual, the next one in that line will be something that I hold at, in in my time early, so that the Eastern Hemisphere also has a chance to participate in this broadcast. Um, I uh, will try to find an appointment, uh, date and time for that uh, soonish and make a new announcement post on Patreon so that you know when it will be. And I hope that uh, even though it will probably be quite early in uh, Central European time, uh, that you still 
the one or other of you will still be able to to join me because uh, uh yeah being alone sucks <laughs> no um yeah so uh yeah i guess that's it then and um, thank you for joining me and also for the lively chat this time that was really nice uh ah last minute question <laughs> good timing um any possibility of creating macros such as record a macro series of commands through the eye and then play them back um hmm. that sounds like you have some something quite sophisticated in mind like actually um uh, remote controlling basically the ui i'm not sure if i'm understanding you right there but um for that i have no i don't see any possibility despite using an external tool or something like that if all that you want is sending specific g codes to your printer you can also uh, you can always look into the custom controls stuff that also allows you full-fledged scripts including templating support uh, depending on variables from the printer profile and whatnot so maybe if all you want is uh, do some repetitive tasks at the click of a button on the printer then this is what you're looking for and uh, it's actually um, in the documentation on docs.octoprint.org under feature um, uh, custom controls and for that thing uh, there is also a nice plugin also again from Mark Hanapel, aka Salendora, um, that is already in the repository, uh, which allows you to define that stuff through the UI, because usually you would need to edit the config YAML file in order to define your own custom controls. And uh, yeah, I think that stuff is quite powerful uh, for, for, for your general run of the mill automate, uh, automate automation tasks. And uh, what, what I've also been thinking about, maybe just let me talk about that a bit more. Um, but I don't know if I, if I ever get to get ever, ugh, sorry, if I actually ever will get around to doing that. But what has been, um, yeah, going around a bit in my head is uh, something like um, if this, then that for, for Octoprint basically built into it, like with, with your own rule set and basically allowing you without having to write your write code write actual code but just something like i don't know if you know node red where you can just drop in various nodes and connect them with a, with another and by that define some kind of behavior what to do when stuff happens and how to transfer uh, data that is coming in and then putting it out somewhere and all that so this is something that is yeah going around in my head a bit having something for that like that for Octoprint would, I guess, be quite nifty, but I don't know um, if I might be able to do that. Um, there was another question. Are you considering conditional G-code? Well, basically, um, the the, the G-code script, scripting language that I mentioned, the, the, the templating uh, for the custom controls, you actually can do conditions in there. So you can do something like if the extruder count on my current printer profile is uh, more than one then i don't know do this and that and otherwise do something else or if my printer has a heated bed then heat it up or otherwise step uh, don't do that now and um ah, there, there were also some more uh, context variables that are available at uh, execution of those templates you can also ask input from the user and then inject it in templates or react to ver values that are uh, provided by the user in the custom control and then utilize those values in the template to yeah to basically populate conditions or uh, or or adjust uh, generated g code which will then be sent to the printer line by line so this is something i not ha i have not seen utilized a lot but it's uh, actually quite powerful so uh, I don't know, maybe take a look. There's also an example in the documentation of a little somewhat stupid script that I did uh, as, a, as a small test of the implementation, which just allows you to, yeah, which allows you to make your printer dance. That was a bit, yeah, it was a silly afternoon for me. Basically, um, you enter a number of how, how, how much it should go around and then it will just uh, move the head hot end up and go in circles a bit, then move it down again, move it up again, go in circles again. And that all depends on the parameters that you entered. And um, that's the whole uh, G-code generation through some, through some templating. So this is 
I hope some some good example of uh, what might be possible if you uh, dive a bit deeper into that stuff. And the templating language is actually the same that is used for um, the whole interface of Octoprint, which is uh, called Ginger 2. And this is really a, a quite powerful templating language, which is why I, I thought, hey, <laughs> why not put this behind behind G-code scripts might be interesting. Um, so uh, that would be all now, I guess, though, I'll try to prep the recording of this Hangout. Also, I hope I, I hope I get it out uh, over the next week, but um, the releases of the software are currently um, yeah, priority number one. Uh, the, um, after I finish this this YouTube stream, however, you will also if if you I don't know if you tuned in late and want to rewatch from the beginning all that, you will be able to watch the full recording at the same URL that you um, just used to join to. Um, I will probably recut this uh, raw recording though and, and snip off a bit at the beginning so that people don't have to wait so long for it to start, like last time basically. So, uh, in any case, I guess I'll really wrap it up now. And uh, again, thank you for your time and thank you for participating. I, I really enjoyed that. And I hope I see you next time. And uh, until then, take care and happy printing. <laughs>